Hi, I'm Diana, the artist behind my McDoodles. Welcome to my channel. Sometimes you'll have a piece of artwork that you've created in your sketchbook or on your watercolor pad or in some other format that you really wish you had in a digital format, whether it's to print um, like greeting cards or make a pattern or have it in some sort of format you can upload to print on demand websites. Sometimes it's convenient to have it in a digital format. So there's a really easy way you can digitize it using just your iPad and I will show you how to do that today and all the apps you can use that make it really, really easy without any like special software or having to get on the computer. So first you're going to choose your artwork or paint your artwork and then you'll need to take a photo of it. You can take a photo with your iPhone just from directly overhead as clearly as you can, or you can use an app such as this Scanner Pro app. This is the Scanner Pro app. You can turn your iPad or your iPhone into a scanner and it makes it really convenient. I'll have a link to this in the description for this video. This is the Magic Eraser tool, and it makes it really easy to quickly erase out a background, especially if you have like a nice clean image. So this is a lot of fun to play around with, and it might be kind of useful for projects like this, or if there's a lot of other ways you could use it too. I'll have a link to this in the description of this video as well. So you can open the Scanner Pro app from your iPhone or your iPad and use it to scan your image and create a document or just a scan of the photo. So I'm going to um, tap the plus sign here and then you can choose down here in the menu whether you want to scan a photo um, or create a color photo, a color document, or black and white. I'm choosing color photo and you hold it level over top of your image as straight as possible. And it'll kind of prompt you to, if you have it like tilted or angled, it'll say that it's um, to hold it level to avoid it being distorted. So it'll give you little prompts. So it kind of helps you along to make sure you get a nice scan. And then you just hold it over your photo and you feel like you have it straight and everything is like level and you're holding it still, you can click the button and you can adjust your borders here. So you can see that it's going to cut off part of the wing there. So I don't want it to cut off um, any parts of my image. So I'm just going to drag these borders out until I feel like I have it um, close to the edges without cutting anything off. And then you can save it. So if you go here, you'll see it in your gallery. You can make some adjustments after you take your scan as well. So up here in the menu, there's um, edit, and you can crop it. If you, if you accidentally cut off some of it, you could um, adjust it here as well. Um, you can rotate it, you can do some color corrections, um, the perspective or distortion correction. You can do these adjustments to uh, work with the contrast and the brightness. So if you feel like it got like washed out, you can take that down a little bit and kind of work with it to get it to look as close as you can to what it looked like in real life. If you changed your mind, you don't want it to be a color photo anymore. You can press color document and that kind of makes it like nice and clean. A color document might be easier to erase out your background because it doesn't have like this watercolor paper texture in the background anymore. It's just all white. So that would be pretty easy to erase out the background. So you could do that. It's just completely up to you. I'm going to keep it as a color photo because I feel like it preserves more of the details and like the sparkles from the paint and everything like that. When you're satisfied, you can export it and I'm going to save it to my photo library here. So it's in my camera roll. You could go in here and use the magic eraser app and just open up the scan you just made. And you can use this image to 
uh, work with, or you could use the, uh, just a regular photo from your phone or your iPad, which I'll show you next. I took a photo with my iPhone and I airdropped it to my iPad. So this is the photo I'll be working with today. You can see it's not perfect. The lighting isn't perfect. It's not like a high quality scan or anything like that. It's just a photo I took with my phone and this is gonna work fine for the project I'm doing. So I'll choose this photo and then I'm going to go into an app called Magic Eraser. You can just import your photo and I'm going to choose square. I try to get it as, um, as big as possible within the border so there's less white area that I need to erase. And then you can just grab this magic wand and just start taking out the white areas of your, your picture. So if it removes too much, there's ways you can add it back in. You can also adjust the tolerance here to to um, adjust how much of the white area you're removing. I'm gonna leave mine kind of high just to make sure I get all the bits and pieces around the butterfly because you can always go back and add um, some of the areas that it might have deleted too much. You can add those back in. And then you can also go in by zooming in and just clicking on these little areas here and there that are left behind to get all the little bits and pieces. So that looks pretty good. When you're dealing with watercolor, there's always a lot of little bits and pieces um, of the white areas to erase. Just to check to make sure you don't have little tidbits left out here in the border or like right here where it might have erased too much, you can press this eyeball and it'll put a background in for you. And then you can kind of see a little easier the areas there there might be some problems. So right there, I don't want to erase all that. So I'm going to push this restore. It looks like a marker. And you're just going to color that area back in. And you can increase your size of your pen as you need to. And just kind of clean it up a little bit. So you can do that for any areas where you feel like it's erased too much. And you might not have like as jaggedy of borders like this or um, as much stuff to erase out depending if you are scanning in like a painting or if it was something you drew with um, like markers or a pen where the borders are more defined. So I think for something like that, I'm just going to erase everything out and then just like draw the, the bits back in because it'll draw the lines cleaner than if I try to um, grab all these little bits and pieces from the actual painting. So we'll just restore some of this here with like a really tiny brush. And basically I'm just drawing the antenna back in. Okay, and then you can just like do a quick pass through to see if there's like lots of little white bits over here and around all the borders. Now I'd say if you are going to digitize your artwork for um, like making patterns or something where you need it to be perfectly clean, this might not be the best method. This is more for like um, things that where it's not going to be like making or breaking my design if there's little bits like this left behind that I didn't realize. Um, but if I was going to be selling my art on like um, fabric or something like that, I would probably use a different program like Photoshop or Illustrator or something to um, to get these scanned in nice and crisp and all cleaned up and um, more of a professional like um, product in the end. But this works great for if you just need to quickly digitize your work, you, you want to do everything from your iPad, or if you don't have um, those other programs I mentioned to do it, then, then you can make this work. But the quality won't be obviously as good as if you scanned it in with like a high resolution and use the, um, the other programs that are more meant for doing this kind of thing to, um, to clean it up. Okay, so I think I got 
all those little bits and pieces. It looks pretty good. So um, I'm going to turn that eyeball thing back off. And then I'm going to export this as a, a PNG. So you can just choose this export. You can choose a JPEG or a PNG. The PNG has a transparent background, so it can be placed in different documents and stuff without having this white box around it. So if you want to make like um, stickers for Instagram or clip art or things like that, you would need to do PNG. If you don't mind if it has this white border, if you're only placing it into a white document, then you could certainly use the JPEG. But the PNG is more versatile and um, I think it'll give you better quality. So I'm going to choose that. I'm going to choose high resolution and save it. And of course, if you don't want to mess with any of those apps I just mentioned, you could just take a photo with your phone or your iPad, um, export the photo directly into Procreate. And the next time you open Procreate, it'll be in there. And all you need to do to resell the background in that case is use the select tool with the automatic turned on and just tap the areas you want to erase out and slide to the left or the right to adjust the threshold. And just watch the borders of your work to make sure you're not erasing too much out. And just go through your piece and pick up all these little pieces. If it picks up too much, you just slide your finger a little bit to the left to lower the selection threshold. And you can certainly use this to do everything right in Procreate and not have to use any third-party apps. And you could check to make sure you are erasing all the little white bits without leaving anything behind by turning off your background layer or putting in a dark background so that you can see if there's little like white pieces of um, the watercolor paper or anything like that left behind. It'll show up really well if you put a dark layer behind your um, image where you're erasing out the, the background. So that's another way to do it. If you just want to do everything all from one app, you don't want to mess around with the scanner app or the magic eraser tool, um, you can just do everything in Procreate. So let's make a new document. I'll show you how to recolor it and make different variations. I made a square. So I made a 3000 by 3000 pixel square. In the actions menu, click add and then press insert a photo. And then I'll choose my PNG from my photos there. And you can see that's my cleaned up butterfly. It doesn't have a background. If you turn the background layer off, you can see it's transparent, which is exactly what I want. So I can see um, in front of me, I have the original and the digital version. And I can see that the colors are not exactly what's here. It might be hard to see on the camera, but this is much brighter um, on the real watercolor of this butterfly. So I'd like to brighten it up a little bit. I'm going to make a copy by swiping to the left, pushing duplicate, and then um, turn off the original. I'm not going to mess with the original. I save that just in case I need it. So I'm going to work with this layer. Before I change the colors, I'd like to brighten this up a little bit and get it to look more like what it looks like in real life. So I'm going to work with this one copy, not the original, but the duplicate that I made. And go over here to this um, magic wand and click curves. You can kind of play around with the, the curves and the color profiles here. And it really helps bring out the colors and the texture and um, a lot of details in your work. Uh, when you play around with these curves sometimes, you can get it to look better. So I just have it on gamma. It's going to affect all the layers of color. And I kind of just only had to scooch it over a little bit towards the left, and it already looks much better. I like how it looks here. It picks up a little bit of the sparkle. I used metallic watercolors, and it even picked up a little bit of the sparkle here and everything. So I am happy with that. So I'm going to use this. Um, as my new original and I'm not going to mess with this one. I'm going to keep this one yellow and I'm going to duplicate that and 
manipulate the colors a little bit to see if I can create maybe another colored um, butterfly or some variations so I have some interesting different butterflies for my pattern. So I'm going to turn off my first layer and keep that gold one um, as my first butterfly. This one we're going to try to see what we can do with the colors. Let's name this one gold so we don't touch that. And go to your new butterfly you just duplicated. Click the magic wand again. And this time you can go into hue, saturation, and brightness. And you can slide this hue to the left and right and get a lot of different really pretty variations in your artwork really easily without having to repaint this whole thing. So I'm going to go with this like one that's just like a little bit peachy, a little bit pink. Maybe take a little bit of the saturation down and brighten it up. So I like this kind of pinky, peachy version. I'm going to duplicate it again and see what other variations I can come up with. So I'm going to turn off that pink one. Let's just label it pink. And then do this new layer in a new color. So again with the magic wand and then hue, saturation, and brightness. And maybe we'll pull in like some purple. That looks pretty. If you make it too dark, I feel like it loses some of like the watercolor um, texture and stuff there. So I'm just going to leave it like that and label that one purple and then make one more. So we'll duplicate that, turn off the purple one, and then see what color we can make this one with hue, saturation, and brightness. Maybe we'll do like blue. I think that's really pretty. And you can always go back in and play around with your curves too if you need to, if you make it like too washed out or something. Sometimes you can, um, if you wanted it to be lighter, but you feel like you're losing a lot of your um, details there, you can play around with your curves and see if you can bring it back in. But I like it kind of like something like that. And we'll save that one and call it blue. And now you have all of these really pretty butterflies to play around with. So you can move them around the page, you can use them to create like a new piece of artwork or for digital download if you sell products in your Etsy shop or you make um, like customized products where people can download your, your paintings. Um, this is a really easy way to paint it once and then be able to sell multiple copies of it. Um, in different colors and stuff like that too, not just multiple copies, but different varieties without having to repaint it or create a whole new piece of artwork. So no matter how you cleaned up your design and imported it into Procreate and recolored it, now's the fun part where you get to play around with all your new little pieces. So I have four colors here for my butterflies. I'm going to put them all into a folder and that's my original folder. I'm not going to touch those. I'm going to duplicate that folder and turn off the original. I like to save a copy in case I need to go back and use it. And I want these to be a bit smaller. So on my duplicated folder, I'm going to just resize these just a little bit so I can move them around the page and work with them a little bit. So I've resized all of them at once by just grabbing the entire folder and resizing it. And now I can scoot these around the page and do all kinds of fun things with them without worrying about um, damaging the originals or anything like that. So now you have all these fun elements to play with without having to paint all of them from scratch, which makes it a lot easier and saves you a lot of time. And you can really have some fun creating a lot of different of variations, a lot of different pieces with your elements that you painted once. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to click like and to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next fun tutorial. If you post your work on Instagram, you can tag me at my McDoodles or hashtag my McDoodles so I can share your work in my stories. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.